All right. What's good? All right. So let's do this. I'm back at work. It is now one o'clock. So water ready right here and that's uh, my water right there got my wipes got an extra brief diaper we call it brief and I got the trash bin ready so what I do is I split it in half so one half I throw trash in the other half wet soil linens on that instead of walking around pulling two of these I just pull one I just put two bags and I split it in the middle so I do that all right so finally done five after two yeah you can call it that so it took me an hour right uh, had 11 people had um, a lot of mess and one soil, two soil, I think. Is the kitchen to go heat up my food. Don't walk with me. cafeteria so we'll be at sometimes alright all right, so it's uh, after two typically normally this is my break this is my break time so it's three of us tonight. <sighs> Usually it's not three of us. So we just we are literally cruising. Me and my two fellow coworkers. We're just chilling right now. All three of us are done. Um we are done our rounds, we're done straighten up the room, take the trash out, um, give them fresh water. Um who, whoever was soiled, we took care of it, and um, that's about it. The nurse already took their vitals. Yeah, so that that's what's that's what's good right now. Um, I'm gonna head on back upstairs. I want to show you something. I'm actually reading um, the Gospel of Luke, and I seen something in uh, chapter five, 
believe it's verse. I want to say verse 9. I want to show you something. So stay tuned for that one. Hold on again. Alright, let's get into it. Luke chapter 5. No, I was wrong. It's not verse 9. It's verse 8. So, here's what had happened. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, Jesus, to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. Now, if you remember, Genesaret is the same place as Gad, where the guy who was uh, demon-possessed, that's where he was. So, same place, same, same country. Um, so, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. Um, that's the Sea of Galilee. So, that lake is called, or is named the Sea of Galilee. Um, oh, also, let me throw this in there. So chapter 5, the message of chapter 5 is, is to present the gospel in many ways as possible that men might hear to have an opportunity whether to accept Christ or to reject him. That's the message of Luke chapter 5. I learned that from J. Vernon McGee. All right, verse 2. And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. So Jesus sat down and he's teaching them out from the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering him, answering, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. So when I have first read it, I'm like, wow, that's, that's typical of us. That's what we do. You know, the Lord tells us something to do or not to do, to go or not to go, to say or not to say. And we, instead instead of just doing it right away, um, obeying him right away, we want to put up a protest and argue. And, and, then, and then argue the fact that, you know, I've been doing this already or... Come on, you know, I, I'm I, I, like he said, he's been out there and they've been working all night. They've been fishing all night and, and they weren't catching anything. So how much more successful are, am I going to be, Lord, is what he's saying to, to, to Jesus. Like, come on, really, Master? Like, we've been out here all night. We didn't catch nothing. You're talking about go further out into the, into the, into the sea? All right. I, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it, but... You see, is is there's nothing. The net's is still gonna be empty, and that's what we do. We argue, you know. We we argue with Christ. We argue with the Father. When initially we should just trust Him immediately and right away, you know. But it's just a lack. Is I guess some of it is a lack of faith, lack of trust, and I also think we just think we know it all, or we think we know. We know better than God. I think that's what it is. And when he had, let me back it up. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Oh, and they beckoned unto their partners. They begged the other fishermen, them, which were in the other ship, 
that they should come and help them. Like, it was so much, so much in the net that was caught. They was like, yo, we can't even manage this on our own. We need help. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. It was so much fish, yo, that both of these ships began to sink. Wow, remember now, he was out all night, but he didn't go further out into the deep. Here it is, the master is telling them, go out further. Sometimes you have to go out further. We have to go out further to get a good catch, to reap, you know, to get a, a, a good turn, um, return, a good revenue, a, a good success, a good catch. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me. For I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And so also was James and John and the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch Amen. Now let me stop there. Verse 8 it is, is what stumped me. When Simon Peter saw it, saw what? The, this great um, catch that both ships were sinking. Like, it, it, it blew his mind. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Right? So when I read, I'm like, whoa, what's that about? Why would you say that? Like, and I was like, man, if I had my, I wish I had my Matthew Henry commentary so that I can um, get, get the breakdown of what was happening there, get, get the understanding of what was happening there. And I was like, you know what? So what I did was, I was like, let me read it again. So I read it again, and I start back from verse 1. And then I read it all the way through to, to um, when I got to 8 again, then I was like, okay, let me read 9. And for, at, for he was astonished. Oh, he was astonished. So, okay, okay. And all that were with him. So everybody that was with him, Peter, they were all astonished. They was amazed. Remember, he said they was out there all night and they didn't catch nothing. At the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And then it hit me. Because he doubted, he doubted the Lord. And he was ready to have an argument with, God, with the Lord. Only to um, be proven wrong. And he's like, you know what? I'm unworthy to be in your presence, you know, of, of, of you, the all-knowing God. Depart from me. He says, depart from me. Leave, just leave me alone. You know, get away from me. You know. Why? For I'm a sinful man. Oh, Lord. Wow, that blew me away, man. Blew me away. And I was thinking about something that um, is going on in my personal life. And that right there spoke to me. And it just, it just, it forced me to admit that I am a sinful man. part just really hit me man it really did because I, I, I was I, I've been struggling with something quite some time and you know I was doing the same thing Peter was doing arguing with the Lord you know every time I would go before the Lord in, in, in prayer in faith I, I would hear the Lord in my spirit dealing with me about this thing that I've been battling with, that I've been dealing with. And I just was, um, I was, I was, I was, 
I don't want to say I wasn't justifying it. I was I was looking for loopholes and making excuses. That's what I was doing. I was making excuses and still like I try to go around the thing instead of just deal with it head on, acknowledge it, admit it, confess it, and stop it. And that right there hit me. He fell on his knees. He fell, he fell down at the at Jesus' knees. He said, Depart from me, leave me. I recognize I'm a sinful man, O oh Lord. Yeah. And so I finally confessed my sin. I finally looked at it, grabbed it by its horn and said, enough is enough. That's enough. I don't want to take God's grace and mercy for, for um, granted and, 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 and take disadvantage of it. It's wrong of me. It's sinful of me. That's what I wanted to show you. That part right there hit me and uh, it, it helped me to confess things that I've been dealing with. And it felt so good to confess it and finally come into agreement with the Lord. It, it helped me to come into agreement with the Lord and, and, and call it what it is and call it what it was. So that I can be set free and delivered. And be restored and be in, in right alignment with God. Alright. Anyway. That's it. I'm going to go eat my food. It's probably cold. Um, I'll let you, all right? You keep living on purpose. Godly purpose. Kaboom!